This video will demonstrate how a deterministic model of a simple scale can be used to isolate important variables used to improve performance. Now let's use a simple model of the standing long jump to examine how to evaluate errors. First, we need to develop a deterministic model. This requires us to choose our most important goal of the performance, and in our example, this is total distance traveled. This goal can be further broken up into takeoff distance, flight distance, landing distance, and fallback distance. So let's develop a deterministic model with total distance at the top, which is made up of the other important distances below. If we examine the distances, we can see that there is a flight distance, which means that there's a condition of projectile motion. That means that we can break this down even further into velocity at takeoff, angle of release, relative height at takeoff, air resistance, and acceleration due to gravity. We also know that velocity at takeoff can be broken down into initial velocity, and change in velocity, and relative height at landing can be broken down into height at takeoff and height at landing. Breaking it down a step further, we know that in order to change the velocity of the athlete, we need to consider the impulse. This is related to the forces that are exerted and the time that forces act. By knowing our appropriate relationships, we can continue to expand our deterministic model. For example, forces exerted can be broken up into forces at the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the ankles, while time that forces act can be broken up into time that forces start and the time that forces end. We're able to even take this one more step and break time up into each muscle group. Of course, it's also important to consider that takeoff distance, landing distance, and fallback distance can be affected by physique and body position of the individual. Finally, before we use the model to evaluate performance, it's important to realize how some of the variables are related. For example, the height at takeoff and landing are related to the physique and body position connected to the takeoff distance and fallback distance. Now that we're finished with the model, we can highlight or circle the boxes at the end of the various flow paths. These are the basic determinants of the task. We may or may not be able to modify them. So here's the list of all the circled boxes at the end of the flow diagram. We call these the determinants. From this list, we need to consider what factors we can actually change, and what factors can demonstrate important differences between a novice and an elite performer. We can go back to the flow diagram and cross off any of the factors that can't be readily changed. We can cross off air resistance and acceleration due to gravity because these are not factors that we can easily modify. And we can cross physique off because even though we can change this with training, it won't assist us in deciding upon correct form immediately. Now that we've discussed these factors, we can cross them off our list. And you can see that we're now left with a manageable list of factors to consider that can help evaluate a performance.